and welcome. This video is going to spend just five minutes going over the key structures that you see on the mandible. The mandible has fundamentally got two major parts to it. This vertical part here, called the ramus, and this horizontal part here, called the body. And from those two major components, various structures sort of stick out. The first is this area up here, and this area here is called the condyle. And that's going to be the key bone that articulates to form the temporomandibular joint. And the other part that sticks out off the top of the ramus is this area here, and this is called the coronoid process. And the coronoid process is where the large temporalis muscle attaches before it sneaks and hides behind this little area here, which is not part of the mandible, but we're going to pop it in any rate, which is the zygomatic arch, or your cheekbone, as you may have known it. The other features that you can see on a mandible is uh, the first interesting one. See how this has got a little dent just here? That little dent is called the facial notch. And that's where a large artery called the facial artery cr comes across there and it runs up across the face to end just in the corner of the orbit there. That's called the facial artery. And if you run your finger along the lower border of the body of the mandible, you can actually feel it and you can actually feel the artery running across it. The other feature here that is often talked about is the corner here. And this corner is called the angle of the mandible. And that forms the corner between the ramus and the body. And then we have this little piece that sticks out here to form your chin. And it's sometimes described as the mental process. And the last part of bony structure that you can't see a boundary for, but we talk a lot about in dentistry, is this area of bone that the teeth are embedded in. And that area of bone is called the alveolar process. And the alveolar process is the bone in which the teeth are embedded. There is no boundary line between it and the body. They are continuous. The only way that you know that this area of bone is different is when someone has lost their teeth, this alveolar bone will disappear and you'll end up with just the body of the mandible left. And the last little feature that's very important when you start giving local anaesthetic is this little foramen just here. And that little foramen there is called the mental foramen. And that is where the mental nerve exits from the bone and it's a branch of a large nerve that runs through the mandible deep inside here. Most of it continues on around inside the mandible, but a piece comes out to supply the skin and the lip and all of this area out here called the mental nerve. And this nerve, as it's buried in here, is called the infra... In, um, inferior alveolar nerve. And when we look at the medial surface of the mandible, we'll see the little opening where it comes out on the medial surface in there. So that is the key features of the mandible from the lateral surface. We'll now go on and have a look at features on the medial surface. 
Now here again is the medial surface of the mandible. Just to orientate ourselves again, the body of the mandible is this area here, this horizontal part, and the ramus of the mandible runs up this side here. Now we're going to look at these key features on this side of the mandible, on this surface of the mandible, and the first and most obvious one is this one in the midline here, this little cluster of little lumps there and they are called the genial tubicles. And in fact there's supposed to be four, pretty rare that you actually see four, but there's supposed to be four, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And those four are muscle attachments, two on the left and two on the right. Um, those muscles run up into the tongue. And the other really obvious feature on this skull is this ridge running along here. Can you see that ridge there? That is called the mylohyoid ridge. And that is a ridge, and you can see it on this side here as well, that is a ridge where the mylohyoid muscle attaches. And that mylohyoid muscle swings from one side to the other here, forming the floor of the mouth, and the tongue sits on top of that muscle. And just below it and adjacent to it is this groove running along here. Here it is here on this side. Oops, there it is there on this side. And that groove is called the mylohyoid groove. And that's where the little nerve runs, and that nerve will come off and it has a whole bunch of little fibres, the mylohyde nerve, I'm just going to draw the nerve in green here, comes off and runs to supply the mylohyde muscle and another muscle that we'll look at in, in just a minute. And while we're in this region here, you can see this foramen in which the spring is attached, right here. That is a really important foramen for dental personnel. That is the mandibular foramen. And that is where the inferior alveolar nerve enters the bone to run around and supply the pulps of all of these teeth. And this little mylohyoid nerve, if we just extend it up here, actually comes off the inferior alveolar nerve before it enters into the inferior alveolar canal and runs deep inside the bone here around the mandible here to supply each of the pulps of the teeth. So that's the mandibular foramen up there, a beautiful little foramen. The other thing you might notice, do you notice how this area of the mandible here is actually quite rough looking? And that's rough looking because that is where the medial pterygoid The medial pterygoid muscle attaches and that muscle drags on the bone and roughens the surface. The other feature that is quite clearly evident on this side here is this indentation and we saw it on the lateral side as well and that's called the facial notch isn't it? And that's where that facial artery takes its journey across onto the, uh, onto the face to supply most of the facial structures. The other thing to notice is if you look very carefully you'll see a little bit of a dent just there and its symmetric one is just there. And that dent is where the digastric muscle attaches, anterior belly of digastric. and it's called the digastric fossa because that's where the muscle attaches. And as I said, that mylohyoid nerve supplies two things, the mylohyoid muscle obviously, but it also comes down to supply the digastric as well.
So that's the digastric fossa sitting right there. Now just because it's quite obvious, we should talk about the little foramen just here. This is just a, do you notice it's not symmetric? There isn't one on the other side. This is just a uh, supplementary foramen where probably some veins or something have exited through the mandible. So that's not, uh, not a core feature. The other two features I want to point out are very subtle features that you really can't make out obviously on this skull. Um, and you really need to actually put your fingers on and touch a skull. One area is just that area of bone there, and the other area below the mylohyoid ridge is just this area in here, where you can sort of make out in the images a sort of two indentations. This here is called the sublingual fossa, so I'm just going to put a number one next to it there, and we're going to put a number two next to this one. Number one is the sublingual. And number two is the submandibular. And they are fossa. And they are where the two glands, the sublingual gland and the submandibular salivary gland, rest against the mandible. So they are some of the key features on the medial surface of the mandible. Thank you.